everybody. How are you? Lil Lum here with Lil Lum's Health Lard Tips. Back again with another great tip for you. Coming at you live here on the Instagram. It's excited to be here. Hope you are too. Feel a little dizzy now after that chair spin, gotta be honest with you. Um, so today, today I was thinking to myself, um, well actually yesterday I was thinking to myself, there's some things that I do when I'm making art for various and sundry reasons. I wanted to share it with you today and see if it might be helpful in your art making process. We're going to talk about how you can use pre-painted textures, like actual painted stuff in your digital work or even in your traditional work, like with collage or to paint on top of. So why would we do this? Well, well, I've noticed that many of my own students struggle with starting things on blank white paper, okay? Uh, and there's a lot of uh, students, myself included, with sketchbooks that remain untouched because they're so nervous about ruining them that uh, they don't do anything. And that makes me really sad, really. Do you see the tears? Very sad. And I thought, well, here's, here's what we should do. One time, I, th I made a student take their sketchbook outside and, and rub just it rub it in the dirt. <laughs> I did. I did. I didn't like forcibly do it. I just said, listen, take that sketchbook outside, rub it in the dirt, and then you won't be afraid to mess it up because it'll already be messed up. And I just like, I like working on pre kind of jumbled up, messed up stuff anyway. So that's kind of what I thought I would do here. Now, it was years ago that I made some of these. You can take a look here. Anybody with us? We have Pugs for Life. Hello, Pugs. Helena. Helena. Cooper. Cooper, welcome. And Jen Trot. Hello, Jen. And yes, I will give you my speeches today. <laughs> Isn't that a nice way to get, get answers quickly? Um, indeed. Right after this show, as a matter of fact, I, I'm going to put that together for you. All right. So I've got these textures. Um, and I tried to do a whole bunch of different colors, right? Like here's the... Thumbs up. The deep dark. Awesome. From Mrs. Good. Uh, here's one that has purple background, and then I put like a weird green on top and used my fingers to create the uh, the lines that you see on there and the texture and pattern. He literally, do you want to know how he did this? He dumped paint in the sink. I did. And laid paper on top and then took it out of the sink in his classroom and then put them on tables and went. That's exactly what I did. Um, Wax on, wax off. I spent a couple hours in the classroom. This was a while back, actually. And usually what I end up with is a lot of exercises that students do that they don't particularly want to take home. You know, they're important to do because they help them in their process, but they're not final works of art. And so we have leftover paper. And a lot of those exercises happen on um, a piece of newsprint. Okay, you can see, hey, here's a practice little portrait thing going on here. And then you can even see on some of them how I just, I basically just recycled what they had, painted right on top. And I squeezed colors in various combinations in my stainless steel flat bottom sink and just kind of wiped it around with my hand. And then I would take a sheet, I would lay it on top, and I would try different things. So maybe I'd add more or less water, maybe I'd press on it, and maybe I'd just lay it on. Then I'd pull it out and set it aside to dry. And then once that was dry, I would uh, do another one. So, and sometimes I would do multiple layers. So I put in a base layer with one set of colors and then add another. So where you see, uh, like it, these kind in particular, where I did the swirly motion, these have a base and then a secondary. Here's one that had like a darker blues and purples first. And then I went back with red on top, all right? And then there's some in here that, um, well, that one kind of, right? Some are, some are maybe rough and jagged. Some are smooth and organic. Uh, this one here had a green background, and then I just went massive yellow on top. Uh, and then I would cut them into sections. And the reason, if you're wondering, why are they like this? This is um, eight and a half wide, and I did that so I could send it through a, uh, a feed scanner, right? So it was the widest I could send through, so I had to cut the paper up into sections. And now I have digital versions, actually high resolution digital versions of all these. Graham Burns Studio is here. What's up, Graham? How goes it, man? Good to see you. How's the uh, how's the concrete stuff? You doing any concrete work lately? 
Not only are these great for uh, backgrounds for paintings and pictures and things, but scrapbooking. Scrapbooking, indeed, right? So I just got a, I got a ton of these things. I love them all so much. I just love looking at them, but they're also good for um, using and reusing. Okay, so I've been working on this little uh, digital sketch in Procreate on my iPad on the uh, Wednesday's Draw with McCallum on Twitch. I'm doing that. I'm trying to do that on YouTube and Facebook Live now, too, so hopefully more people could see that. Graham Burns says, what's up? Um, he says he's doing a little, but he's doing some art at the moment. Love it. Good to hear. Like, right now? I, I hope so. I would guess That's so that cool. Means. Good. So here's the deal. Um, now... You could be like way small scale in this, right? Literally make one or two of these and you'll be fine. So here's what here's what I recommend. Find some pigment, paint, dirt, tea, coffee, whatever you've got around. Nail and polish. Nail polish. And literally it it not it's not so important all the color really. You just want to get some cool texture. Okay? And then you can take a photograph of that with your phone or your iPad. And you could pull that into your digital work, or you could start chopping that up for something you're going to use in a collage or something that you would draw or paint on top of, okay? So if I'm working on this, what I might go ahead and do is, um, let's go to my photos, and then I might I'm gonna open this up. To open this up. Now, um, I could just take a rando picture like this, or I could find one that is more strategic, like, oh, I need something for a sky. I don't know. Okay, so let's grab this. There's probably better ones, but um, I'm going to come in and take a picture of a section I like, which I really like it down here. Oop, oh, I'm going to zoom in. Okay, I'm going to take that shot. And then I'm going to go over to Procreate, and I can choose the actions and insert a file or photo. Okay. I could actually take the photo from right there as well. But I will put it on from here. Boop. Okay, and now I can set the size. You can use a small portion or a large portion. And then once I got that in there, I could, oh, look, I got it in there twice. That's awesome. I don't need all that. Oh, oh oof, oofta. So once I get it in and size the way I want it, I could always um, change a blend mode, okay? Or I could um, I could make a mask of it, whatever I need to do. So let's try like a color burn or a linear burn or even a multiply just to Ooh. allow the, the lines to show through, okay? Now on top of that, if I wanted to, I could um, fill with the colors. So let's let's choose like a a light blue, a little sky. We're gonna go with that, and then um, once I have that color selected, I should be able to fill a layer with that, and then I could change the blend mode of this. Okay, just see what what works here. That's kind of funky, right? Whatever I can just cycle through this and see what I like and how it affects it. I do this a lot with. Um, digital painting that this would be the kind of one that that I like all right um, and then I could go back in and I can paint on top of some of my other areas so now I have this kind of really interesting textural quality to the background that I can mess around with I can change the hue and the saturation I can alter the colors I can do so many things digitally with that uh, regardless of the color of the original photo. That's the fun of digital right there. But what I like is that I'm getting this like incredibly cool texture like I hand painted it, which I did because it's it's already right there. Um, and I think it adds a lot of character to the digital work that I do. So I often layer those up a lot and get different textures going. Now, you don't just have to paint it. Sometimes I just take um, scans of either previous drawings or other kinds of papers that I have laying around. Uh, my students often, I have a butcher paper on the table and they draw on it or paint on it all semester long. And then at the end, sometimes I'll save sections of that. I'll scan that in and use sections of those because the, the texture and the, the colors are really cool. Um, sometimes I'll take something old that I didn't like so much 
and just take a little section of it. Like this is literally um, five or six Crayola markers that I held in my hand and just did a line. And then I threw some other kind of textures in, did a little uh, Photoshop work, printed that out, and now I have uh, the basis for something I could paint right on top of, okay? If you have paper with cool textures, go ahead and cut up a section, scan it or photograph it. It's hard to tell, I think, on the video for that one. You can kind of see it. Yeah, but uh, I even painted a couple, I did some spray paint work uh, to make things look like, uh, kind of like a rusted or aged metal. And then I scan that in, I can use that as texture for digital work. But it's also fun just to, to cut up the shapes and make other cool collages out of it, so. Graham Burn Studio says, dude, texture is totally the work I've been doing lately and I love it. Nice, nice. And it's, it's so satisfying, just the process of making it. Because A, when you're making these, there's no risk, right? There's nothing that you can really mess up because there's, uh, you're not worried about that being the final thing. And you can try it so many times in so many different combinations and use something that already has a bunch of scribbles and, and artwork. Recycle it so you're not wasting uh, good paper. Just use it as an opportunity to, uh, to just experiment and have fun. So that's, that's kind of what I do for my process. This is me rubbing the sketchbook in the dirt, okay? This is me overcoming the fear of the blank canvas and just going for it. And it's also me experimenting with digital process and analog because I'm, I'm really an analog guy, right? But I love the power of what digital can do to combine things that I do in an analog fashion. And what you'll probably find me doing is as I work on a piece that includes scans and drawings digitally, I'll print that out and then I'll paint on top of that or use things like um, gouache and colored pencils on top. And then I have a nice sort of deep, rich uh, layering effect that feels feels like I've been painting layer on top of layer. And I really like the way that looks. And I love the textures that are there. All right, so if you got a sketchbook that's scary white, just let's, um, let's get the fear out. Spill your coffee. Spill your coffee on it. Okay. Spill some water on that. Dip it in, like dip it in a, a vat of, uh, you know, ink, something, wash. Spill spaghetti. Spill, yes, and just then let it dry. Wipe it, like smear it, wipe it, let it dry, and go. And now you have instant texture because if you're like, uh, I don't know, what's the phenomenon? Some of you can can relate to this. You know, if you stare at a a carpet pattern or a ceiling pattern in some kind of drop ceiling and you see, you start to see faces and, and figures. When you look at the clouds, you see things, right? That's what starts to happen with these textures is you start to see things in there that are exciting. If you're like me, I'm kind of a, I feel like I'm a sculptor when it comes to drawing. I like to sculpt and find the drawing more than I'm sort of, um, you know, maybe drawing from a mental image in my head, okay? I'm more prone to say, what can I find in here that looks really interesting? And that this process helps me to do that a lot too. So um, to that's close, my tip. To close things off, can we ask uh, what jersey Luke Alwarda is wearing? Yeah, Luke, he's what, here. Luke, what do you got? Which one? What's your team today? MMA Studios is also here. Luke oh, MMA have, left, but. Um, okay, well. We, we want to know what jersey. Yeah, post it in the comments, Luke. Uh, well, guys, thanks for hanging out. It's been fun chatting with you, sharing my. Uh, love of art and making and process. I hope it's helpful for you or somebody you know. Don't forget to share it with somebody if you think it would benefit them. And like, subscribe on the old uh, YouTubes if you don't mind. That'd be fantastic. It's a wah jersey. A wah jersey. I feel like he had that on yesterday. <laughs> he probably has a bunch. Oh my gosh. All right, kids. Uh, we'll see you. Hey, I'm thinking this weekend for a little uh, cooking show action. How about it? All right. Any sneak peeks to share with us for I got show? I got no sneak peeks because uh, I got to see what the groceries are going to be on Saturday. So. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, friends. We'll see you later. Yeah.